All right. Good morning, everyone. Appreciate everyone joining us here for this morning's call with Jason Owe. Um, just a reminder, if you have a question, please use the raise your hand function. I will then ask you to unmute and you can ask your question. Rich Garcella. Thanks, John. Jason, good morning. Thanks for your time today. Can, can, you, des can you describe um, what challenges that Justin Fields presents uh, for a defensive lineman? Um, well, obviously, he's, he's very uh, mobile. Uh, he's elusive. So uh, I, I, could, I could speak for a lot of def defensive linemen. And uh, it's not fun playing a guy that knows how to move in the pocket and knows how to, you know, move at the right time, step up in the pocket. So I'll probably, I'll probably say, yeah, just being mobile and elusive. Tyler Donahue. Good morning, Jason. A um, couple of weeks ago when we heard you on media days, you were talking about some new moves you were excited to work out, just kind of your, your nuanced technique that you had worked on in the last 10 months or so. How did that help you out against Indiana on Saturday? It seemed like you were consistently applying pressure. How would you evaluate your week one performance? Um, yeah, I think I just did a good job of, um, you know, just setting the tone, like the speed and the level I wanted to play at. But just, you know, the run, obviously, playing physical on the run, um, striking, seeing my keys and stuff. And then when it came to the pass rushing, the get off was already there because I was striking. So then I just had to see uh, my man, see his hands, and then react off of it. And then as the game progressed, I started, like, getting a, a better feel, just, you know, playing with it, gaming. And then uh, I was able to get a few hurries. I, I, didn't, I didn't get home, but, you know, it's just going to come with more repetition, you know. You just got to feel it. So, yeah. Greg Pickle. Good morning, Jason. How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Obviously, Justin Fields, you talked about him. But as you watch Tavis, Ohio State offense, what else stands about stands out about what they did at Nebraska and what you guys will face this weekend? What jumps off the tape to you about them? Um. Just the uh, the way the how athletic their line is, um, they really get out of their stance and run, and then in pass pro they're pretty well, pretty uh, they do pretty uh, do a pretty good job as well. But um, you know they do they have good receivers, they can spread you out and stuff like that. So they're, they're very dynamic on offense, but I'm very confident in what we can do. Um, I'm not putting anything past us. So. Nobias Wilborn. Hey, Jason, hope you're doing well today, man. Thanks for taking out time for us. Thank you. No and problem. no problem, bro. Um, what did it do to you guys to lose Jesse for that half, for that rest of that fourth quarter? And then how does that impact the first half against Ohio State, considering what their offense is? Uh, you know, Jesse's my guy. You know, he's he's a dog. He, he just brings a certain toughness to – to the game when he's in, but um, so you know it's gonna be tough. But it's the next, it's the next man up mentality. We have uh, Lance stepping up, so we're gonna see what it, what he got. And I, I believe in, in Lance, I believe in everyone on our team. So no, I'm not really worried. When he comes back, Jesse's gonna he's gonna be booming stuff. So uh, I'm proud of that. Audrey Schneider. Morning, Jason. Um, since New Bias took my question, um, I'll ask you about practice yesterday. Um, did you get a sense yesterday that it was that Indiana was flushed and you guys had moved on? What did you maybe see or um, notice that has you believe in that everybody is totally moving forward? Uh, it's, I mean, I feel like it's just it's old state week. I don't know. I don't know why we'd still be hanging on to the to the. Uh, as game, it's it's a one and zero mentality. We didn't we didn't get it. Now we're trying to be one and zero this week, and this is it's old state week. We got to we got to be locked in. They're a dynamic offense, and we and we're we're a dynamic defense. So we got we got to do everything we can to be as focused. So I don't, I don't think anyone was really hung up on, on on that loss. You can't do that if you want to win. You gotta you gotta move on to the next thing. So we was all moved in, moved on. Mark Brennan. 
Jason, this is obviously a big year for you. What was it like to finally get out there on the field after kind of, you know, you think you're going to have a season and you don't think you're going to have a season, then you, then you know you're going to have a season. What was it like to finally get out there and maybe show your stuff a little bit? It felt good because, you know, like you said, it was just so many times where you just thought you weren't going to play and, like, you know, things were going to be pushed back and all the work you put in was going to be for nothing. But, you know, just finally stepping on, on the field, it was it was kind of crazy because, you know, it was, it was my first it was my first season starting and everything. So that that was kind of mellowed down because, you know, we, we, no one had been playing. But it, it was it was it gave me some jitters at first. But then once I started playing, I was like, yeah, I'm starting here. I can play with these guys. You know, it was fun. But it, it, it just felt so good being out there after after so long and so much uncertainty. So. So good. Rich Garcella. Jason, can you describe the leadership that you've received from Shaka Tony and what kind of role model has he been for you? Yeah, Shaka is like my, uh, he's my, like my big brother. Ever since, you know, I got here, he's took me, he's taken me under his, uh, his wing and just, you know, showed me the ropes, you know, on the field, off the field. And he, he's, He's just in a, like a relatable a leader. He, he's like, he knows how to relate to everybody. And, and I think that's like one of his, his best skills. He knows how to relate to all types of people. And he can talk to you. He, he knows how to like, you know, teach you in the right way, approach you. So I, I, I'm really appreciative of what uh, Shaka, you know, has done for me and what I do for Shaka as well. Like that's, that's the thing. It's, it works both ways. I, I help him, he helps me. And I feel like that's why that's why our, our duo and our relationship is just going to continue to get stronger. Tyler Donahue. Jason, with the news we got on Noah Kane yesterday, uh, we're all expecting to see more of Kivan and Kazaya out of the backfield. Uh, you've had a chance to see that on the practice field pretty consistently. What are defenses going to be facing with those two true freshmen? How are they different from one another? How do they complement each other? And, and what's your confidence level that the Penn State – ground game can be strong moving forward yeah I got I got a lot of confidence in, in those young guys especially them because like they all they both just bring their, their, their different types of styles to like the game like Kevon is like a big kid strong legs you know he's gonna run through you and like he's just gonna keep on running and he like he runs without gloves you know he's just tough and you know he's just gonna get them extra yards and then Kazai, he's elusive. He's strong as well. And like, you know, you, you guys saw the tape. He jumped over, jumped over a defender in lines that like he has insane athleticism. So I feel like the more reps they get, they're just gonna, you know, get better. And uh, that's that's all that's all we're trying to do, just get better. Like we have a, a lot of young guys having to step up, and I feel like they're gonna do a good job when, when the moment comes. Elton Hayes. Morning, Jason. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Hey, uh, looking at uh, last week's game against Ohio State, you know, Justin Fields obviously is known for his dual threat abilities, but uh, Ohio State has two running backs in Sermon and uh, Master Teague, who uh, both you know carried the ball extensively between the two of them. Just kind of what what challenges does that present having you know facing two running backs of that caliber, and uh, what have you all kind of noticed just in looking at the little film that you have on those two guys? Uh, I mean, I push it every like every other game. We have to stop the run, and then we can get to have fun and, and pass rush. I don't really notice anything uh, too crazy, but uh, we stop the run, we can pass rush. That's all I'm, I'm about to say. Ben Free. Hey, Jason. Thanks for doing this today. Um, what did you see from Joey Porter Jr. and him making his first start? And you, know, what is his ceiling like? Joey's gonna be crazy. Like Joey's like a prototype, lanky, tall kid. Like he he he's gonna be really good. And like the way he played, it, it was crazy. Cause I remember on on his set, I, I was coming I was coming into the A gap. And I was I was sure I was gonna go come get him. Cause I was gonna flip my hips, and I just saw Joey just running in and smack him. It, it was crazy. I, I I never seen someone like that come come in that type of speed. So yeah, I'm I'm really excited for Joey and what he can be, his potential is is whatever he wants to be in. And like the crazy part is that 
he's still like growing into his body. Like he's not at his full man man strength yet. So I'm really excited to see how he develops and everything. And he, and he wants to work too. So that's that's the good thing about him. So I'm, I'm excited for Joey Porter. Partha Pai. Hey Jason, appreciate the time this morning. Um, this is something you kind of answered already at, at media day, but I wanted to check in again. You know, you had a very solid game, obviously. I think the second highest pass pass rush win percentage in the country against Indiana. Um, you know, in your third year on campus, is there a certain pressure of wanting to show that, you know, Jason Oway has arrived? Um, I mean, I always, I always have, like, goals for myself. So it's just internal pressure. I, I want to reach goals. But uh, in terms of external pressure, I mean, you guys create it. Like, uh, like I said, you guys always create the narrative. I just have goals I want to reach and, and, and things I want to do. And if I if I if I beat those and keep on, you know, progressing, I feel like it's just gonna tell uh, tell itself. So uh, I don't respond to pressure for real. Tyler Donahue. Jason, if I could ask about two guys in that room with you, uh, one, an older guy and Dion Barnes and, and what he brings to that room coming back as a former player. And then the other, a guy getting his first long look with Akeem Beeman. What did he do this off season to put himself in that position? And how did he handle an expanded role in week one? Uh, so wait, you're asking me about Dion. What was your first, the first part of the question? Yeah, Dion's influence in that room, his impact, and, and then also Akeem's uh, rise in that room. Okay. Uh, yeah, Dion. Like I said, Dion is like master splitter. Like since since he's came here, he's he's taken me under his wing and really tried to like get me right in all aspects of the game in terms of hand work. He like over the summer, like you know, he just he just really helped me in terms of everything, like hand work, um, film, you know, just understanding the game more. So I really owe a lot a lot of my development to him. And the thing about him, he's very relatable as well. He has a lot of what Shaka brings to the table and him as well. So um, he, he, yeah, he's going to have a very great career. I'm, I'm very appreciative of Dion Barnes and what he brings to the table. And then um, Hakeem Beeman. Beam is a dog. You guys saw it in the game. And the crazy part, he's, he's still just trying to get it as well. Like athletically, he, he's, he's a freak. You know, he's not even, he doesn't even weigh, weigh that much yet. He hasn't even grown into his full body yet, but you know he he can pass rush as well, pay the run. So I'm really excited for uh, Hakeem Beeman. I think he his potential is first round, high first round too. Mark Brennan, Jason, could you expand a little bit on on Dion Barnes? Are, are there specific things that he's able to kind of get across to you? And you touched on this a little, but the age difference is kind of close there. Uh, how much easier is it not that it's difficult to relate to other coaches but when you have somebody who's that close to you in age uh the communication i have to believe is at a little bit of a different level no nah, it's just he just knows how to like you know obviously a guy like me i play i just started playing football so like a lot of terminology that you know coaches use i i, I didn't understand and i was just you know trying to like make knowledge of it but he knew how to really break it down and explain it to me in terms of like, um, in terms of, you know, just, just, you know, understanding it, um, knowing how to apply it in the right places. And, you know, I was, I was just really grateful for that because I, I just didn't understand it at that level, like in the prior years. So it, it, it's just the way how, how he approached it to me, how he uh, explained it as well. I would say it was the biggest thing. Jason, we lost your camera. I don't know if you can, you can't, there we go. Yeah, I mean, someone was calling. Richard Garcella. Jason, you mentioned last, or you were asked about last week's game. You had good numbers. The defense had good numbers. But what do you, what do, what does the defense have to do better this week in order to beat Ohio State? Um, I feel like, I feel like we just burned out. I feel like we just got to keep on applying the same pressure that we did in that second half of the game. We were just flying around. We were, um, I mean, I feel like in the first the first part of the game, we stopped the run. We just got to continue to do that and then, then apply the same, the same, the same level of intensity that we did in the, in the past game that we did in the second half of the, of the Indiana game. 
So I feel like if we just keep in t- intensity, the havoc that we that we were playing with and consistent, a consistent level, we'll be fine. So I'm not really worried about that and what my guys are going to bring. Tyler Donahue. Jason, do me a favor and look back at the Jason Oway who was wearing a Blair Academy <laughs> uniform just a few years ago as a senior, thinking he had a lot figured out. But I'm sure you realize now probably didn't have much figured out about football. What's the scouting report on that on that young man versus where you are now? How, how far have you truly progressed uh, that you can measure in your third year on campus? Man, I progressed a lot. I just – I progressed mentally, you know, physically, just matured. You know, like a lot of people just mature physically in college. You got to mature mentally. And I feel like I, I matured a lot mentally in just understanding what it takes to, like, survive and be successful. Not just not just survive and be successful. And, um, you know, the Blair Jason was just young and, like, very naive to everything and 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 what you know what, what it took. So um, I'm I'm really thankful for the progressions I made and where the progressions I can make too because I feel like I'm still only like 60, 55 percent of what I can truly be. So I'm really I'm really happy where where I'm where I'm where I'm going. Dan Hope. Hey, Jason, I know when you were coming out of high school that your recruitment came down to Penn State and Ohio State. What was it about Ohio State that appealed to you at that time and what ultimately made Penn State the right fit for you? I don't, I don't care about what Ohio State did when I was young. When I was young, I fell in love with Penn State because I love Penn State and the people, the atmosphere, um, you know, the family orientation, you know, the – Coach Spence, what he was able to preach to me, you know, the, the love, the love of this place, and the inner love of this place, of what what Penn State truly is, the connection, the networking, and all, this, all that stuff. I fell in love with that, and that's all I got to speak about. That. We got two final questions here. Nabias Wilborn. Uh, <clears throat> I know, I know. Obviously, you said earlier you're looking forward, but what? And you may have already answered this, but what, if anything, do you take that was a positive from that game that you can carry over into the, the game against Ohio State? Ohio State. Ohio State. That's all I'm on. Ohio State. Ohio State. Tyler Donahue? Jason, this has been a year of, like, uh, up and down emotions for everybody involved in college football. But when you look around the practice field, Micah's not there, Journey's not there, Noah's not there. Three of the marquee guys, when when people look at this 2020 Penn State roster, how do you feel like your group is moving forward uh, with a long way to go this season? How are you keeping that focus? And and is it strange at times to not see some of these names and faces involved on the practice field as you get ready for such a big game? You know, it's yeah, it's it's always like obviously you miss you miss you miss your guys because you know you have a relationship with them outside of football. But um, you know, it's the next it's the next man up mentality, like I always say. I feel like we're gonna be fine. You know, we just we haven't played football in a while. We're, we're all still just trying to we're a young group and we're all still trying to find out how to play with each other. So I have faith that we'll bounce back and will be fun, you know. Um, a lot of a lot of good teams and winning teams started off bad. A lot of good Penn State teams started off bad. And I'm not, I have full faith in our defense and our offense as well. So I'm not worried about any of that. Jason, appreciate you taking the time to join us this morning. Um, hope you have a great rest of your day and good luck this weekend. Thank you, thank you guys.